Welcome to the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies, where there's always another secret. Welcome back, everybody, to episode 63 of the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies. Today is August 10th, 2020. I am Bill, and I am joined, as always, by my ingenuitive co-hosts, Amy and Jordan. Welcome, guys. Hello. Uh, before we get started, we do want to remind you that the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies is not a spoiler-free podcast. That means if there is something in the Cosmere you haven't read and are worried about hearing spoilers, you might want to go read those first, then come back and join the discussion. And this is, of course, con uh, a continuation of last episode's discussion. We are reading and discussing preview chapters from the as yet unpublished Rhythm of War that Brandon is releasing early on tour.com. So tonight we're actually going to be discussing the prologue. So for those of you who listen to the podcast recordings or watch the videos on YouTube, we do want to remind you that it's possible for our listeners to interact with us live via chat as we record each episode at www.twitch.tv slash innkeepers table. We record episodes of the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies every other Monday night, starting at 7.30 p.m. Pacific Time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern. So please join us, take an active part in the discussion. Okay. Guys, I'm excited about this. Uh, like, I, yes. I normally am not one who likes to read ahead, and this is just making me hungry for the book. <laughs> Like I'm, I'm kind of hit and miss some stuff. I'll read ahead, and other things I'm, I'm patient and waiting. And I, I could have been okay waiting, but not when I need to be informed. I just can't. Yeah, personally, I, I normally don't read ahead on this stuff. I've traditionally avoided uh -huh. this stuff. But you know, now we do a podcast, and we sort of. You either have to cover all the spoilers <laughs> or none of the spoilers, because going back and forth is inconsistent at best. But. To those of you who are out there who don't want the spoilers, who don't want to read ahead, we feel you. We just sort of feel like we got to do it. <laughs> We're obligated. Yeah. So basically, if you do need to take a break, we understand. Just, you know, come back and listen to the show after November mm -hmm. 17th when it's all out there and it's meaty goodness. Yeah. And on the plus side, for those who, uh, who do wait. You get to sort of have the, if you've never seen it or listened to it before, the Mistborn spoilers, where they go through Mistborn chapter by chapter. I highly recommend it. It's just a decadent way of doing it. You sort of get a mini version of that with us. Yes. One thing I will say is if you do take a break, keep an eye on our social media profiles because we do have an announcement coming up in a few weeks about something that will ha be happening in early October. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so keep an eye on that because that's not one that you're going to want to miss. And that is not going to be a spoilery episode, but it's going to be a juicy one. It's going to be so, awesome. Yes, it will be something TM. Yes, I did just make an announcement of an, of an announcement, but hey, I've been a Blizzard <laughs> you know, yeah. player for a while, so you get what I got. Now, the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies is made possible by the support of our listeners and patrons. The show will, of course, continue to be free, but if you want to help us out, head on over to patreon.com slash Cosmere Studies. Even pledging a buck or two re per episode really, really helps as we work to improve the show. Patrons get immediate access to our Discord channel. We've got some awesome people in there. We've got some awesome discussions. And it's just a very, very supportive community as well, which I really appreciate. Mm -hmm. And you can talk about the show there. You can talk about the Cosmere there. You can talk about random other stuff. We even have a channel for, for memes and GIFs and stuff like that. So yeah. Go for it. You know, just just come and join a great community. Just be uh, prepared for prequel discussion. memes. <laughs> we haven't asked there haven't, for a while. There haven't been a lot of those for a while, actually. And now there's going to well, be Well, these things now can be fixed. Suddenly we're flooded. <laughs> <laughs> In addition to that, you'll also get early access to bonus episodes, exclusive access to other bonus content, and other good stuff. So mm -hmm. thank you again to our patrons and to our, our Discord channel for being amazing. Y'all are great. Yes. So are we ready to do this? 
Okay. To dive in at the very beginning? Yes. Okay, so just as a reminder, Brandon is releasing chapters of Rhythm of War leading up to its release on November 17th. Right now, the uh, the pattern is they're basically releasing two chapters every week. And by the time mm-hmm. November 17th rolls around, they'll have released for free online the entirety of part one of the five major sections of this book. So this prologue, of course, each of the prologues has taken place it's the exact same scene from a different perspective, and I love that. It's so cool. I mean, it, it only works when you're working on a series that is this epic in scope, where you're doing ten of them. Yeah. Because, yeah. but it's just it's the same scene from a different perspective, and we get little bits of information each time. Yeah. This it, time, it, we are going to be seeing Navani's perspective, mm-hmm. which we like wow. Navani. Okay, first of all, though, what the heck, Gavilar? We'll go into that at a later point, but <laughs> I have I have emotions towards this man, and they are not oh. happy ones. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but let's so step you, back so for a second. So you feel he behaved poorly? Mm-hmm. Oh, interesting. I, be- I believe, that's I believe a, that if take. he... I believe that if he tripled the goodness of his behavior, he would have to work for years to reach poorly. I do not enjoy yeah. this individual. <laughs> it's definitely a new perspective on a character that, up until this point, has really only received positive attention. <laughs> well, there, there were hints from Navani that she's like, mm, he wasn't as perfect as you would think. Like, but, right. But, but she never went full on... As much as I would be tempted to if I was Navani, but you know, I'm I'm not Navani, so let me just get yeah. say it this way. When it has the time jump and it says Navani heard about the didn't hear about the assassination until after it had been accomplished. Mm-hmm. It's just like and you know what? Serves him right. Like it's just one of those like <laughs> I I just lost all <laughs> But okay, we're jumping ahead. So what's going on right now is, you know, you have this huge feast that the Parshendi are coming to, and it's the, the, the enormous party. And apparently Gavilar is one of those people who just loves to go in and, and tell everybody, sure, come on, bring everybody. And then tell <laughs> Navani, just make it happen. Well, he doesn't even tell her. It just gets dropped in her that's, lap that's for true. this one. That it's just she keeps finding out from all the help. Just that, expects oh, no, Navani to make it happen. And this people, and these people, and these people, and these people. And it's I, just... I think oh the goodness. even the word expecting Navani, I think is even that implies a bit more forethought than I think it's even given. It's clear well, that, the yeah. stuff his side projects that he's working on, he no longer even cares about the kingdom. Like yeah, he doesn't. He's 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 just saying things to get people to go away, and everyone around him is picking up the pieces, which wouldn't be mm-hmm. as bad if the fact that. Uh, his brother wasn't drinking himself into a stupor at this time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so then he, then he can step up more, but he's so kind the, of it, I get the impression the only two people really running the kingdom like actively at this <laughs> mm-hmm. point are Navani and Sadius. And by extension, yeah. Eel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so yeah, it's, just, mean, it's not good. Yeah. No. no, it's just Wow. The other thing is uh, we have grown over the course of the last three books to absolutely adore Navani. Oh, yes. And so we're no matter what, we're already on her side. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just she's they've made her this very, very relatable but admirable character. Mm-hmm. And so... Gavilar loses the PR battle in this just because oh, yeah. just because she has already won it before it begins. And so and it, pitting herself yeah. himself against her is just like, no, you're done. We, you're yeah. dead to me. Literally. You, you, you kill people good in, in your, your, you know, you're gallanting around the country. But um, at home, you kind of you kind of stink at personal mm-hmm. relations. PR, well, so, yeah. something that's interesting about it is there's actually... I, I view it sort of as a very uh, very r- similar to Dalinar. Dalinar, in this time, without war, he didn't know what his use was. 
Legends because right. mm. that's where he had put all his all his talents. And yeah. Gavilar clearly more politically minded than than Dalinar. But mm-hmm. at the same time, he he's no longer in conquering mode. He's now I'm trying to there, I feel like there's a term the person who's never I think he froze. Never w- willing to satisfy mm-hmm. or never willing to to stop. Like at, at no point is Gavilar pleased with what he has and being like, okay, let's focus Insatiable. on this. Insatiable, mm-hmm. yeah. And so he's conquered all of Alethkar and his next thing is like, well, let's do things to shake up the heavens. <laughs> and you're just like, I mean, you know, could you take a break for a little bit, a little vacation? No, we have to keep yeah. going. And so yeah. the, yeah. It, it puts him in horrible conflict with the people mm-hmm. who are the practical minded people who are worried about the day to day things like, you know, mm-hmm. feeding the people, making sure that you've greased the right palms to keep society going. Cause on mm-hmm. top of it all, it's a young kingdom. It's not safe to, to be yeah. doing this stuff. And, and that's not even talking about if he wasn't King and he was trying to maintain stuff, he doesn't have a good relationship with his kids. No, mm-hmm. or his wife. And oh gosh, we'll, yeah, we'll get if, to that. And especially it. if you, like you just said, Jordan, if it is a new kingdom, you need your heir to be strong and mm-hmm. good with you, and they, yeah, they we'll, both, they, oh, oh man. We'll get Go to ahead. the way he talks about his children in a little bit, but uh, basically, he's a narcissist. But we're getting way ahead of ourselves. So, um, yeah. Anyway, so Navani's running around trying to make sure that this whole huge feast actually goes off well and it you know just doesn't yeah. explode around them she's actually a very and incredible she, uh, event planner oh she's oh. magnificent um but, but the, then she uh the line that i loved um where she's talking about how like all the servants are sort of just bustling past her and just sort of giving her a quick nod and she gave mm-hmm. the line they've they've long had since learned or something to the effect that just doing a good job was basically all the deference they really needed to show her. Yeah, she made it. Mm-hmm. She made it clear to them that doing their jobs efficiently was recognition enough. That's what. Yeah. Well, and you could, you see a little bit later on that Navani has quite a bit of imposter syndrome. Oh yeah. Well, you know, she said the the line. Oh, what was it? I have it written down. I'm just a country How, girl oh, or something like that. However prestigious her ancient lineage might be, her anxiety whispered that she was really just a backwater country girl wearing mm-hmm. someone else's clothing. Yeah, fancy clothing. And, you know, she's doing this magnificent job. It's just one of those, ah, oh, I relate. I and, I mean, <laughs> and I mean, if if Elakar's, I mean, it's seven years in the past, her children are grown, she's been queen for quite a while, and she still has imposter syndrome. Mm-hmm. Which, which I'm sure Gavilar just kind of dumping everything Ga- yeah, on her Ga- does Gavilar not Gavilar doesn't help that. Yeah, he doesn't. At all. But you also see, she's one of those who, I, <laughs> she gets no... Uh, no respect. She's just sort of expect like people expect things to work and they I don't know that they necessarily expect her to make it work. They just don't realize that keeping everything going takes effort and work. You know, well, she comes across her daughter in law, Asadon. Oh, oh and, that woman. You know, oh. And Asadon oh, is oh, just oh, sort you're, of wandering you're not a around. fan? No, I would <laughs> I would deck that woman. I don't care. She's she's a sniveling little like socialite who just I'm glad that she gets the end that she does, sort of. But oh, well, I mean that's that's kind of rough just for being a socialite. But she is very thoughtless, very. Oh, oh, and like just just, mm-mm, I'm not a fan at all. Well, and she's always jockeying for position. It's like oh. she's she's the wife of the, you know, of the heir, mm-hmm. but she's still kind of jockeying for position. She she wants the recognition. She wants to be seen, and she well, wants it, to be important. It's a great mm-hmm. foil for Navani because very it much. It really is. Well, because like you were saying about Navani, people don't really understand all she's contributing, but that's because mm-hmm. Navani's a lot like like a lot like most event planning or like good video editing or special effects. Mm-hmm. You only notice it when it goes wrong. Yep. It, a, a job I, well I'm, done is a job that no one notices, and it's unfortunate. Yeah, I'm. Mm-hmm. I'm going to put a plug in for the parents out there that when you're doing a good job, nobody notices when you're not doing a good job. Everybody notices. Well, and and it's that's, just, that's actually sort of a throwback. Wasn't that something that Hoyd said in, uh, the, at the end of Oathbringer where he was, 
where he was talking about the purpose of art and he started to realize mm -hmm. that a good perform like there's another type of good performance but one that will never be noticed and he's like oh, mm -hmm. i'm gonna have to rethink this and this yeah. book starts with navani putting on a great performance that no one's gonna notice yeah, yeah. it's she's taking on such a mental load of just like gunning and then she can't even do what she wants to do like she wants to go talk to the master art artificer and artifabrian artifabrian i always get that wrong and she doesn't get to do anything that she really wants to like this whole time like she's yeah. having to just hustle and get everything so, perfect so yeah so navani comes across acedon talking to this artist and master artifabrian rooster chris who she's um, like fangirling. Who has just created a new <laughs> Fabriel and she's fangirling and Aesudan really couldn't care less. And, you know, she wants to talk to him and Aesudan uses her as an excuse to get away from him. And it's just like, but, but, I, but I, I want to talk to... I wanted, I I wanted to, to do that. But, and, <laughs> and, oh gosh, you just feel for her because she's... Because oh, nobody yeah. else feels is willing to take any responsibility and she's the only one who's willing to take any of it she ends up with all of it mm -hmm. which and i i'm not planning huge parties like her but i have small moments in my life that i'm like i feel this on a deep personal level that it's just like and i handle everything mm -hmm. yay so <laughs> something else that's interesting about that interaction between her and asudon is the line about how it was like a genuine smile and that's a a very different thing for asudon because mm -hmm. everything's a performance for asudon Mm -hmm. um, but then we find out that the genuine smile wasn't for Navani; it was for an here's, escape. Yes, here's my and so out. it's it's so it's just let's just dig Teddy. that knife a little in further because it's one of these things. Asudon strikes me as the type of person who she's not trying to be petty; she mm -hmm. just oh. is petty. She's just she kind of oh, a Jordan horrible froze for me. rat. He did too for me. So you'll sorry, Jordan, you, you froze for a second. Oh, I was just saying she's just kind of a horrible brat. Yeah. Yeah, very entitled. Well, and then it seems like it's really interesting getting this introspective look at Nivani. Not just just this internal look at what's going on in her head. Because the first time we see her, Dalinar's afraid of her. <laughs> and like the Blackthorn is afraid of this woman. Yeah. Um, because she has this confidence and stuff. And so it's very interesting to see her in this mode i just suddenly you mentioning how he's afraid of her he's afraid of her the same way as he's afraid of the thrill it when when we first met her that that loss of control <laughs> seems to be what mm -hmm. that's more Plus what he really him. fears but it's not just that though because we see her reaction she is very direct oh yeah with him mm. and it's just one of those you can you can kind of see as for, after seeing this particularly you're like oh She's just gotten past the point where she cares at all. She's, She's just like, like I, I, I don't care what people think. I'm doing this. Well, I mean, it, it, at the end of the scene, it, I can totally see how she gets to the point where she's like, nope, I don't care what anybody mm -hmm. else thinks. They've, they've cast me aside as a widow. I'm doing what I want to do. Well, yeah. it also makes perfect sense for her character. Because first of all, we're not used to this Navani. Because this is mm -hmm. Navani before she has become the self the fully self-actualized woman that we exactly. see at the start um and we hear her being like oh i'm not really an art of fabrian which we always see that in the books and we're just like really because you sort of uh if, if you're not the actual art of fabrian you're at least the ellen musk of this world that is mm -hmm. pain for the people who are making things and you seem to know and you have good instincts for this crap mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. but on top of it we also see the fact that she so like we get the impression she has sort of sensed this all went down, thrown herself because she did mm -hmm. the practical things for most of her her life. She married yeah. the heir instead of the one that she was more interested in, but a little afraid of. She mm -hmm. took care of all the Gavilar stuff and picked up his pieces because someone's got to run this this kingdom. I feel like she raised the kids probably. Oh, clearly. Mm -hmm. Like, oh yeah. And, and it's, yeah. I, I have a feeling this is sort of a weird aside. I have a feeling Brandon might have read a couple of biographies on various presidents of the United States. Um, this is going to be mm. an odd thing. I, I've, li I've listened Very to a odd. few, uh, a few of these about like Eisenhower, Kennedy, and a lot of these other, uh, presidents of that era. And this is okay. the way Gavilar acts 
towards his kids and stuff is very typical of that era. Um, basically, the the uh, they get so wrapped up in their work, and their work is important and much more important than the average father's work. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, they get so wrapped up in it that they sort of forget their families, and their families start to look like a, a bit of a chore to them because... Mm -hmm. They're living these horribly stressful lives. And it's not an excuse, but it is one of those things that does start to happen. And there, yeah. were, there were specific things where the way he talked to Navani is very similar to uh, a couple times like when Eisenhower, who was known for being very stoic, um, actually got in an argument with his own wife one time. And it was very similar to that where... It's clear both are on sort of their last ends and both are saying things that they know will hurt the other one mm -hmm. because they're trying because it's been so dead between the two of them. It's almost like they they go they're for trying the to throat, evoke some sort of emotion Yeah, to get some of that passion back. Now, Eisenhower, because, mm -hmm. you know, he's not a horrible person. They <laughs> figure this stuff out and get their life back together. But it basically didn't happen until he got done being president. Um, yeah. Whereas Gavilara, mm -hmm. well, you know, Navani basically pulled a, uh, a Kevin McAllister and made her family disappear. And uh, again, we're jumping ahead. Yeah. So <laughs> no. So anyway, um, Asadon heads off to do her socialite thing. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, and Navani's looking back, trying to see if she can catch up to, to Rush or Chris, and of course, then the kitchen. Well, uh, sorry, Asodon hasn't left yet. The kitchen comes up and is like, "Hey, we need help." Because we need help. Um, Dalinar drank all the wine. They don't say all of that. It. Like they don't say all it. All of but, it. <laughs> but they imply that every I, bit of the wine. I love Navani just being like, "Dang it, he's getting clever." <laughs> it's like yep. I gotta figure out where else to hide it. But she has. I still. She has her secret stash, and so she mm -hmm. says. Sends them off to, to go to get go that. that. And so then, and of course, problem. by the time she does that, it's too late for her to go find her fangirl, you know, her, Moment, her, yeah. uh, her, her, her nerd crush. Mm -hmm. Um, and then she goes to find the, Gavilar and then she, she goes to find to. Gavilar. Cause she's like, okay, people are looking for him. I need to find him and get him out there. He needs to go out and, you know, talk to his guests, all these extra people that he's invited you know, these people who got a personal invitation from the king, they think that means they're going to actually get to, you know, talk to him. They're going to well, see him. How ridiculous. Not even, yeah, not even, yeah. It's just bad. And so, um, and apparently Gavilar and Am Amaram have just had a history of meeting with, quote, uncommon figures who arrive mm. without warning and act all mysterious-like. Yeah. Um, uncommon figures is a definite cover band name. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so Gavilar, he just, he's one of those people who just sort of pushes through this, you know, and just leaves chaos in his wake, mm -hmm. expecting the world to, like, he's just one of those people who just, he does what he wants and the world succumbs to, you know, just the world just lets him. Mm -hmm. Just through, because of his sheer force of will and personality. Yeah. Um, All that charisma. Yeah. He has a, well, he has I a mean, nat 20 charisma. Dalinar is very much the same way where he's mm -hmm. used to just sort but Dalinar it's typically a much more physical thing where well and also Dalinar was also the younger brother to Gavilar yeah. so yeah. Dalinar like Gavilar is the person to whom even Dalinar gives way yeah no it was it's it's so interesting to see uh just how how da Dalinar and Gavilar are very similar, mm -hmm. but the weight of that night changed Dalinar. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's really interesting because Dalinar has basically had two very traumatic events in adulthood. Mm -hmm. One is the loss of the, the loss, the unintentional murdering of his own wife. Yeah. And the other is the death of his brother when he was drunk on the floor. Yep. Um, but you know, one, he takes ki that one as, kind of led to the other. Mm -hmm. It did. It absolutely did. Mm -hmm. It's 
Oh, and it's, it's bad. Just, it's mm-hmm. but Dalinar, it, it, like you said, it changes Dalinar, and he becomes. Yeah. He basically becomes the person that Gavilar wants everybody to see him as. Yeah. To see, Gavilar wants everybody to see himself as. Mm-hmm. It's very... It's also... This show. whole thing makes his last words to Dalinar very strange. Mm-hmm. Live by the codes tonight. There's something... Something, something strange tonight. Follow the codes. Yeah. Keep, keep to the codes tonight. Yeah. To it, it's just like... Meanwhile, we find out that he's, you know consorting with heralds Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's the other thing that i find very interesting because the sons of honor are trying to bring the heralds back okay yeah from the way they talk to him it sounds like gavilar is aware that nail and kalak are heralds the people the men that he's speaking with Mm. because uh, kalak mentions um, there's another one of us around tonight. I've seen her work. Yeah. Which mm-hmm. is clearly Ash because yeah. Ash, her, her handiwork, you know, she's destroying her own image and all these well, different and haven't, places. Haven't we seen uh, from, I think it was from Zest's perspective where he saw something. Of, he saw, uh, he saw one of the faces had been defaced. Yeah. yeah. I think so. Yeah. Smashed. I think. Um, which and so, another yeah. crossover from all these different but, prologue but just, things. <laughs> but just, and so if Gavilar knows he's dealing with her- heralds, do the, do the Sons of Honor know, or does just Gavilar know? Because, again, the Sons of Honor are trying to bring back the Voidbringers to bring back the heralds. Yeah. And so it's just, it's, it's, it's a wondering, was Gavilar playing multiple games well i wouldn't be surprised if well he here's i wouldn't either here's the question he it does I, like it does seem he knows that it's 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 a nalan and kalak that he is talking to um are they trying to bring back the heralds what what's the purpose of the heralds cavorting with gavilar mm-hmm. because they're not trying to bring back the heralds they know what's going on what they would be trying to bring back is the herald the one why? Tom? Yeah, because the, they know he's the only one in, on Braze. Mm-hmm. So what's True. what's their motivation? Like, wh- well, that's the other thing, is they're talking about a f- uh, Fabriel that apparently can travel back and help something travel back and forth from Braze. A box. Mm. A box. Are they trying to build a like- TARDIS? Because it sounds <laughs> like they're trying to build a TARDIS. <laughs> we smell like TARDIS. You know, I'll... Uh, I'll allow it. Ah. Although it'd have to be uh, have to be symmetrical, so it'd be like Tardis at art or <laughs> Tardis at rat. Yeah, yeah. It's but a word I, I don't want to say. It's one. It's but the thing is, Brandon. Seven, like he answers two things, and then like no, you have seven other questions that come after. But the <laughs> other thing that they're talking about, they're saying, you know. It sounds like they want to go even farther than Braze. It's like, are they talking like Cosmere world, world hopping? Because like, be it surprised. sounds like that's their goal. Mm-hmm, which is crazy. That's huge because yeah. like that's the most in-world actual, uh, you know, like Cosmere aware actions mm-hmm. that we're seeing. Other than like people like Chris or, or Hoyd. These are like people from Roshar. Yeah. Who are trying to get out and go somewhere else. Completely different aside, Rushar Chris was the name of the Art of Fabrian. Yes, I, but it was a guy. Oh, it I was know. a guy, that's right. But it's just one of these things. They're just like, Brandon, why are you reusing this a phonetic similar name? What are you doing? <laughs> he, he's done it a couple times. Yeah, so. <laughs> it's just, he's, he's so good about this. It just makes me wonder if there's something. I don't know. It's just. Okay, I, that's interesting. Blackthorn oh, United just mentioned, what about the boxes from Mistborn Era 2? Oh, I'd forgotten about those. I'd which remember. is pretty much just a few years after this, which means they probably already have the box. I'm not even going there yet because that's... Uh, uh, I, don't I, want to I, I have to right ponder now. on that. I like, I like that uh, That just because it's a box. <laughs> it's a magic box. Um, but yeah, so... Navani comes in and sees 
Gavilar talking to Nail, who is actually named, and a, a nervous Voran man who is most likely Kallik. I um, thought the who, nervous Voran man was Nail. Did I have that backwards? No, Nail is the tall Makabaki. Okay, I have it yeah. backwards. Because gotcha. the Voran talks to yeah. Nail. No, N- Nail is always described as a tall Makabaki man with a crescent-shaped uh, scar. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Okay. But she um, listens in first. She doesn't just walk yeah, she, straight she in. She listens she, she in she for a while. First. Yeah. And then Gavilar sees her and makes eye contact. She's like, this is my study. I have every right to be I'm gonna, here. I'm going to walk in with my own authority because my yeah. study room. That said, so, I, I do like uh, Gavilar's, the idea, where will no one think to find me? Aha. <laughs> her own study. She'll never <laughs> think to look for me here. Dang it. She thought to look for me here. <laughs> Because again, Navani's clever. Navani mm-hmm. is really clever, and so it's just like, yep. just don't try a match with with Navani. You're gonna lose. No. No. Um, so anyway, after the heralds leave, um, Navani starts asking about him because Gavilar's been acting all all sorts of sketchy. You know, he's just he's meeting with these people, nobody, you know, being all sorts of mysterious. Wouldn't you like to know, weather boy? <laughs> <laughs> but. Um, Again, he just speaks down to her so horribly. Oh, oh my goodness. I mean, it's just like, not even patron. They're just, he's verbally abusive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He, oh, he, he really is, is he verbally goes abusive here. straight for the areas he knows mm-hmm. she's most sensitive in. I, I'm pretty sure the like her imposter syndrome is pretty much all rooted in him. I mean, she probably had a little bit, but he just fed mm-hmm. it. And now... I am not in any way excusing his behavior. No. Navani isn't blameless in this. No, I mean... She's, you know, like, she has even apparently said to him that Dalinar... Like, he's fully aware that she loved Dalinar and not him, but married him. And it's one of those... You can imagine when they first got married, he's like, you know, sure, she could have taken Dalinar, but she chose me. And then over time it starts to eat at him inside. And he's just like, she chose me, but she does. She doesn't want me. Yeah. Um, which, which would hurt anybody's ego. Again, but that said, well, especially someone who is got an ego, the size that he mm-hmm. does after mm-hmm. what yes. he's accomplished. Yeah. It's not but like he had a said, small one to start. That said, <laughs> it does not excuse no, the way that he, he speaks. He to chose her to go the cruel route. He really could like, have tried harder yeah. to win yes. her over more. And, you know, try well, and show her, these are my and, better qualities and then reinforce that. But he took the, well, well I'm just going to be And we, we don't know what has happened between yeah. them over the past, but, you know, 20 some odd years. Yeah. I, I, I kind of. But I'm just saying right now. Th- yeah. I kind of see you it what? as he's doing it. You Like, I don't think he's doing it straight up just to be mean. To me, it, stri- it strikes me as someone who is like at that moment, he wants her to stop asking questions because she's mm-hmm. digging into things that mm-hmm. he doesn't want other people to know. And so what does he do? He goes straight for the throat on everywhere she is sensitive. He is trying to get her to stop prying. And so mm-hmm. he's going to do everything he can to just get her so frustrated, so angry that she'll just drop she'll just it. Stop. And yeah. mm-hmm. that sh- like and to me that actually makes it worse because it makes it more calculated mm-hmm. rather than yeah. The passion, the passionate man that we know, the Kalin boys are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the so the thing that I like—it's it's just it's so horrible. The thing that I like though is that Brandon is so good at writing nuanced characters. Mm-hmm. Because up until this point, we've seen Gavilar is an admirable person who has some admirable traits because of the way that Dalinar looks at him and the way that Elokar looks at him, and even the way that Yasna looks at him. The way now, Sadius looked we, at him. The way Sadius looked at him. Um, but we also see that he doesn't necessarily deserve their love, but we also see that he has earned, at least in some way, that their high regard. Mm-hmm. And so, again, he's just a very nuanced character. There are admirable things that he's done. There are horrible things that he's done. Yeah. And I like that Brandon is able to write a character who is both. Mm-hmm. Who is not just, you know, the mustache twirling villain, and but who's not this paragon? He's his characters are so human. 
it reminds me a like, lot of Mistborn Era 2, actually, where we see how the public looks at Kelsier and Vin, and mm -hmm. we, having read the first book, know that... We know uh, them. That, you know, Kelsier was this intense, but he was not this forward-thinking. Kelsier was <laughs> making it up as he goes and had a lot of horrible flaws. Vin some was of it, some of it was very, very forward thinking. Yeah. Some like, like yeah. there was a lot that he put into place intentionally. Yeah. But a lot but, of it was but, also him just sort of, mm -hmm. re, re, he has a plan that he puts into motion, but he doesn't know when he'll act upon it. And when it's go time, right. he goes and it's damn the torpedoes. <laughs> it's just, there's no going back. Vin was not this, you know, the, the way they paint her, it's like she was this perfect social butterfly that moved in and out of the court just perfectly. And she confidently, except we had that whole scene where it's just like, oh, she just had everything worked out. And we're just and all we're sitting all here like, <laughs> oh, no, it's like, oh, she was so oh, damaged. Honey, no. <laughs> yeah. And so we've, um, we've gotten the reverse with Gavilar. We see everyone, how they viewed him and the... You know, we see how Elicar feels he has to live up to him. We see mm -hmm. Dalinar and Sadius trying to keep his dream alive. We see Navani not cursing his name. Uh, mm -hmm. And now we see this part of him. We get to see the flawed part. And mm -hmm. it's very interesting because Navani, just as he went for the part that is most... she He went for the part that's most sensitive to her. She went to the part that's most sensitive to him. Just be like... Yeah, I'm going to outlive you, and I'm the one who gets to write this, so you might want to consider to stop treating me like this and treating your kids like this. And, and then he go then he goes for the jugular. Yeah, it's just, oh. Because um, what does he do? He cups her chin in his hand. Oh. And it's just the most condescending. You know, he, He's just like, mm -hmm. you're nothing. Why don't I involve you? Because you are not worthy. You claim to be a scholar, but where are your discoveries? You study light, but you are its opposite, a thing that destroys light. You spend your time wallowing in the muck of the kitchens and obsessing about whether or not some insignificant light eyes recognizes the right lines on a map. These are not the actions of greatness. You are no scholar. You merely like being near them. You're no artifabrian. You're merely a woman who likes trinkets. You have no fame, accomplishment, or capacity of your own. Everything distinctive about you came from someone else. You have no power. You merely like to marry men who have it. And that's when everybody's just like, you're dead to me. Oh. <laughs> Go, Zeth. Take him. <laughs> every, like, he the just... The Parshendi didn't send you. I did. <laughs> like, every chauvinist scene and character and everything, I'm like, mm-hmm, right there. That's, that's like, the full... But... Just, like, right there. It's just... You know, she dared to stand up to him, so he has to destroy her. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that's how his entire life has gone, though. That every mm -hmm. prince who stood up to him. How do you rule? Like when you're trying to forge an empire, you crush everyone who says that you shouldn't. This is his. Well, yeah. This is the only mode he knows. This is mm -hmm. conquerors tend to not be good rulers for this mm -hmm. reason, and we're yeah. seeing the it. The other thing that we get out of this scene, again, this is just, he gets a, like, that was his true villainous moment, but there's also a little bit of a kick the dog moment just before, which is when he's talking about Yesna and Elokar. Elokar oh. in particular. Oh, oh that, I mean, that one hurt. Like, Yesna, he's, he's mad at, he thinks that she's off on this, these flights of fancy. Um, and she'll, she'll marry him around and it'll be fine. And, and yeah, it's just like, no, she's going to do what I say. Have, Basically, he will not be defied, is, is what he's mm -hmm. saying. But with Elokar, the statement, oh. I personally doubt Elokar could rise to even mediocre. Oh, that's just soul crushing. When Shows what see, he knows. He did rise to mediocre. <laughs> but when you, when you hear that and then you look back at the scene where he is just drunk out of his mind and talking to, to Kaladin mm -hmm. about, you know, just feeling like this horrible king and not living up to his father. We see how he felt about his father, how much he adored his father. When he talks to Dalinar about, about Gavilar, it, you just, you just see that he has his father on the pedestal and see Gavilar refer to him and speak of him in such a way is just heart wrenching yeah. because he, he, 
is absolutely devoted to the memory of his father and Gavilar didn't deserve it. Yeah. Well, the thing that's interesting about it is also the fact that Navani could have trashed him if she wanted mm-hmm. to. She she had all the tools, but she yep. decides not to. Part of it is for the idea of the man he was. And I think this next part's a little unstated, but I think it's true. Uh, it goes to what Yesna said about how when establishing a kingdom, it's when the the first heir comes up. That's the, the part that can break everything. Make or break. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think on a, in a lot of this, Navani held up the ideal of Gavilar, the, the mm-hmm. good parts of him, almost for her own family's protection. Because mm-hmm. if they found yeah. out that this was all a lie, then everything that he built up that they're trying to do, use now would suddenly... Be, it'd be ripping the Crumble. foundation out. Yeah. And so yeah, be. part of it is, unfortunately for Navani, she can't tell the truth without putting her mm-hmm. own family in grave danger. Mm-hmm. True. Yeah. And this um, is where politics meeting family is just always oh, man. rough and why mm-hmm. I'm glad that, you know, I'm not a royal. Mm-hmm. The other thing that's interesting because and and I think this is one of the things that also just stings Navani is Gavilar accuses her her of loving Dalinar but only marrying Gavilar because she knew he would be king and she realizes that it's true on some level at least they, on some level yeah on a, on a couple of levels yeah well it's, I think but, the phrase that she uses is something to the effect and, of how he's not completely right it's, it's almost mm-hmm. like he, he, he sees the shadow of it. He doesn't he doesn't but, see the full picture. Depth, yeah. But what I'm saying is that that's why she didn't fight back. At least that's part of the reason. Because he's saying something that holds at least some grain of truth. And she refuses to... Again, she's not blameless in this, but she refuses to to lie about that there's also um one other little bit is the fact that he's a guy she's a woman and he she says that he's never used force on her but she's fully aware that he could hurt her Mm -hmm. and there's there's a line when she he's demanding the the oh goodness the sphere the spheres the spheres back and he has to pry it out of her hand and she doesn't fight him but she doesn't just hand it over either Mm -hmm. and being a petite woman, I fully understand that threat. And Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't go up against guys and my husband has never been threatening to me or anything like that, but there is a very definite size difference and you always, it's easy to not think about it until you are in a situation like that. And you realize they could kill me. They could hurt me. And I mean, she's, she's seen how brutal he can be. And yeah. there's always that threat in the back of her mind. When you get verbally mm-hmm. abusive, then there's always the potential for physical abuse, too. Yeah. And so that's, that's something that, that occurred to me and was very visceral in there. Which is what makes her, relationship, her later relationship with Dalinar so interesting. Mm-hmm. Because, because of the way they treat each other and the respect they give each other, she's able she's able to trust that she's yeah. able to trust him and f- feel comfortable and safe with him which is mm-hmm. interesting Good. because yeah. gavilar was always way more in control of himself than dalinar mm-hmm. dalinar mm-hmm. Until, is a, well, until, even, even after i don't trust dalinar completely because he is a man of passion like we've seen he was able to put away the thrill finally but mm-hmm. there's there's always that threat but i think part of it is why did she go to, to Gavilar? One of the things that she says is that he was, like, she was a bit scared of Dalinar. It was a bit safer. She mm-hmm. played it safe, and she still got stuck in the situation. I think part mm-hmm. of it's mm-hmm. also her maybe having this realization that you can't play it safe when it yeah. comes to a natural relationship. You have to trust those vulnerabilities to mm-hmm. one another. And it's why... they're. Because, they, again, they both went for the thing that made the other one feel vulnerable. The, and um, her, hers is a more the, existential threat, but his is a more physical threat. The mm-hmm. saying that I've heard a, a few times is, 
Love is giving somebody else the power to hurt you, but trusting that they never will. Yeah. That feels fair. Feels like a true um, so anyway, after Gavilar goes off to be, <laughs> you know, prime jerk ruler of all creation for a little mm. while, Navani goes and she draws a glyph prayer. And the a, word very, she a very uses, artful one. <laughs> the words she uses are death, gift, death, in the shape of Gavilar's heraldry. Uh-huh. And then she burns And it. she's not entirely, like, it seems almost, not entirely deliberately, but, like, it almost just sort of very, um, what's it called? Flow of, uh, uh, stream of train of thought, uh, Stream of oh, consciousness, stream of that's yeah. it. You know, it's just, this is what, you know, she starts drawing something and that's what comes out. And then she burns it. That's why I go back to <laughs> Kevin McAllister. I made my family disappear. Oh, man. Oh. And, you know, of course, that happens. And she doesn't let herself, you know, dwell on, you know, say, I, I made this happen. But she has a split second the, where she's really worried course, that she did. Of course, because... I mean, that's the kind of thing where you're just like, what just happened? Did I, you know? Was I involved in that? Also, what a horror, um, like, if that's the case, like, let's say that, you know, this is the Herald's giving you your one wish, and you're just like, crap, I wasted it on assassination? Really? I used it there? <laughs> this is the one time? Um, Come on, people. <laughs> Read between yeah, the you lines. One wish, you want to know when you're going to have your one wish so you can use it to wish for a million wishes. Yes. I mean, everyone knows uh, that. Um, there was one other little line that I, I kind of liked that made me feel like Brandon really um, did a lot of his research on verbal abuse and different things like that mm-hmm. and abusive relationships is um, she's, she's talking about how she knows Gavilar's better than their conversation they just had and she suspected he knew it too. Tomorrow she would receive flowers. Mm-hmm. No apology to accompany them, but a gift, usually a bracelet. And so, I mean, as much as he's like, you just like trinkets and things like that, that's still kind of how he tries to smooth over whenever they do fight. And from the the media that I have consumed and different things like that, that seems to fit with what yeah, people lots, usually Yeah, such a bombing. subtle nod. It's very, mm-hmm. very well well yeah. done. Now, I know some people who've been in, and, and it's accurate. Yeah. Like, it's, it's exactly how that works. Well, it's especially true with someone who has as much power and wealth as he has. It's easier for him to give a gift than it is to admit fault that he's wrong yeah Mm -hmm. well especially again for him because his entire empire is built on on him and Mm -hmm. the idea of what people have for him so for him to admit guilt is also tantamount to him admitting weakness Mm -hmm. like the two are are inextricably tied for him and so you i love it because he clearly wasn't always this man she wouldn't have married Mm -hmm. this man Mm -hmm. um but you can see where the power has gotten to his head. The responsibilities have started to crack his soul. And he's now viewing what he does as necessary. And once you decide that what you're building up is some sort of utopia, there's no action you can you can take that doesn't mm. uh, justify. Because yeah. it's utopia on yeah. the other side. It'll be so great. Mm-hmm. What's the quote from a Dr. Horrible sing-along blog? The world's a mess, and oh, I just need to rule it. I just, it. I just, I just need, to need to rule it. it. So Cheyenne uh, Sadai in the chat mentions, she says, uh, it's a mirror to the justice glyph at the end of Wheel, uh, of Way of Kings. That's oh, a, actually a very that is, yeah. interesting point. I hadn't even made mm, that connection, but it really is. To the to the glyph prayer that she... Yeah. Mm. I One thing, this is something that we, we don't get to dwell as much on, just because we don't tend to get explanations of the glyphs. Um, it reminds me a lot about the uh, like uh, Japanese or Chinese characters, how there's a phonetic sound to these things, but you can also put them in a way that's artful, that can give mm-hmm. a good double meaning to things. And so her doing it in such a way that it's also a parallel to his own uh, his own emblem. Yeah. yeah, it's just like, ooh, let's just that's good. It's a shame that she just burns it afterwards because you're just like, man. That's that's that, that ins- nice on the wall. Right that's there. that insult that you come <laughs> up with, like you know, two seconds after the person's left. You're just like, dang it, I should have said this. Oh, that would have been great. This yeah, was um, so good. So I, 
Is, isn't that, though, how they, you know, quote, send the prayers? Yeah, it, yeah that's, that's how they send yeah. the prayers. Yeah, but um, so I so wanted him of... to see it so that he could know that she burned him, literally. <laughs> so speaking of kanji, which is the Japanese word for yes, Chinese that's characters. The word. Yes, um, I can't remember what it's called in Chinese. Um, but yeah, they're usually, I'm not great at remembering all of them, but they're usually made up of little different things like... Mm -hmm. grass and different all the different little symbols often will mean different things like for father it's like two axes kind of or two things like that and like something else over the top just showing like that they work and we've we've seen that in a lot of the the imagery mm -hmm. that that isaac stewart has yeah and i'm sure he he's pulled from all over the place with different things Mm -hmm. but yeah but it's just it's a great world building line that we don't get to appreciate as much Mm -hmm. (laughs) i i know we should be focusing on the fact that you know Gavilar's horrible, but you know, I got really distracted. <laughs> the other thing that's um, interesting is, you know, we we jump forward in time after that, and again, the line that Navani didn't f- hear about the assassination until after it had been accomplished. So, so you know, the alarm goes off. She doesn't hear any of this. Mm-hmm. She's going and she's sort of dismissing all the guests and helping them go home. And she thinks it's been a rough party, but that's but it. It's and fine, then, you know. And then, you know, the um, messenger comes rem- over. Yeah, the messenger comes and just like Gavilar is dead, and she's like, "What?" what? Like, and she she just it, she doesn't really process it for a second. She doesn't even really believe it until she sees yeah. the body. Right. Yeah. But but she, but, th- she but, thinks but, they like, like he that she thinks that Gavilar like left to go do something, and they think well, that like he's dead, but he's not. You can tell that. It's kind of a, almost a sort of shock. Oh yeah. You know, because she's you know she's he was just alive. He was just being abusive. He was, he was just there, he, yeah. You know. And she she and even makes a comment slightly before that that she um, she tries to talk to the, the messenger by name mm-hmm. because she doesn't want to treat him like Gavilar treats her. Mm-hmm. It's just a thing. So anyway, but it's just one of those things, just like. No, because he, especially because he has just been talking to her about and, how he's going to live forever. Yeah, he's like, I'll let live. You know, you can't destroy any of that. And, and now he's gone. And he, like, just, you know, you see the ego on this guy because he's just like, I'm going to be greater than the what, the sun. Sunmaker. Um, sun, sunmaker. Mm-hmm. And he doesn't even last. An, he's like, I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to. My legacy is going to last for forever. And it's like, he didn't even make it another hour. I am Ozzy Matthews. Behold, my works be mighty and despair. Be mighty. Mm. Yep. And, and so th- you can see there's a cognitive disconnect for her when she finds out that he's dead. And then mm-hmm. she goes and she, you know, she's just like, I get, you just see this sort of shock because she doesn't know how to respond. Yeah. In, and it, in, in, on one hand, she's free of this horrible, horrible. relationship. Yeah. On the other hand, their their last words were, were in anger. Mm-hmm. And she's like, "Those and are going to be last words no, for forever." Yeah. And this, it's also one of these things. This rock, this person who did feel eternal, is gone, and it just it it can almost shake your worldview. Well, and the other thing that she said was basically they'll never have a chance to fix it. Like the mm-hmm. thing, like part part of the problem is they all both and she said I think she said it in a way that's just like they both seem to always think that they would eventually mm-hmm. fix it. Like given time mm-hmm. that they they yeah. would figure this out and they just kept putting off the important part of the relationship and now they never will. That's too late. Yeah. yeah. Which is why um, and again, you got to work on. And it. again, the last and again, the last thing that she did was pray for, for his death. <laughs> yeah, pray for that. Um, what you wish again, for? that's just the, that's going to be something that you you internalize. It's going to be that's got to give you issues. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, this this um, was a really hard part of the scene to read. But having but then she obviously. says she would be the bigger person. Mm-hmm. She would give him the positive legacy that he wanted. And it's just a fascinating. It was. Take. I think. I think Gavilar would have been kind of mad at this part, mm-hmm. but she. She's. Um. She's like. So she's talking about how she's mad at him and everything else, and she's like, no. And she's like, so she felt another emotion, pity, 
that she mm-hmm. feels pity for him. I don't think he would have liked that. At no, all. not at all. But that's all she could feel. Mm-hmm. It was she couldn't be angry at him anymore. She just pitied him. This is another yeah. uh, mirror to uh, Dalinar and Gavilar. Then the last conversations they had with their wife, an argument where they mm-hmm. were horrible to them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it's different parties uh. that survive those arguments. Yes, and it's just it's very interesting the fact that both made the exact same mistake. Yeah. Yep. In in moments of passion, which is probably why they're so careful in their current relationship with each other, is that they they have experienced that and seen where it's gone horribly wrong, so they don't want that to happen again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. the The other thing that's interesting is her when she goes rifling through trying to find those spheres. The spheres, exactly. because yeah, exactly. and everybody's like, "What is she doing? It's terrible." Well, but it's one of these things where it, it shows that. Much like her daughter definitely inherited this from her, that coolness under under pressure. <laughs> cool's under pressure. Mm-hmm. Where it's, mm-hmm. she suddenly realizes, wait a minute, those rocks he had. Like, she doesn't know what they are. She knows the they're important. And so she the goes spirit, looking yeah. for them at first, and she's just like, where are they? Oh. Well, and all we know is what happened to one of them. Yes. Because he gave it to Zeth. Hmm. So we don't. And Zeth buried Zeth buried it in Yakaved. Yeah. But we. But yeah, we don't know she, what happened to the rest of those. Yeah, but she she covers it up by like taking off some of her hair jewels and or hair spheres and puts them in there. So it's like, oh, I'm returning the gift. That smooth, he gave. Yeah. so smooth. <laughs> yep. The body's good at this. She mm-hmm. knows how to play politics. Yes. Yep. She knows optics. I love it. Which is one of the reasons that she works so well with Dalinar. Oh, yeah. He needs like th- that. <laughs> they really are a power couple, I oh, feel yes. like. Yes, yes. Well, there was so, something but, else oh, about the, near the end. I'm trying to remember what it was that I wanted to discuss that was interesting. Oh, we didn't discuss the Amaram Yesna stuff. Yes. Oh, yeah. So, so apparently she's turned him down for the second, or for the first or the second time. I can't remember if it was... I, I think, think the second time, because I think I think she said something about re, have, he re, she rejected him again or something. Well, so I've always I love this because I've I've never felt like Yasna was ever interested in him. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Th- th- when they have that scene in uh, in Oathbringer <laughs> where Yasna just unloads both verbal cannons all at once. Mm-hmm. And it was just this awesome takedown. And what one of her lines is like. He's like, there was some, and she's like, no, my father felt like there was something. There never was. And just <laughs> yeah. cut, cuts him straight to the core. And, well, you, and I, there's something darker, though, like in the in the history. And I'm I'm really that we're, that we're going to see just with Yesna and either Gavilar or Amaram, because she said something about, you know, people who are supposed to love you being you know, really hurting you and stuff like mm. that. And it was just. And so I am really kind of worried about when we get that scene. I, it's going to be hard. I, I have like. a suspicion it's going to be Gavilar more than Amaram. Because I, I, think so too. I don't think she has that deep of a connection with Amaram. She, she can hate him and be mm-hmm. irritated that he keeps pestering her for, yeah, you need to marry me. And she's like, no, go away. But or, or like her dad, Gavilar, hurting her would be so much mm-hmm. deeper of a wound than yeah. Amaram, who's just an irritating courtier. Or suitor, suitor. That's the right word. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to find that line where that happens. But I'm and and uh, Blackthorn United in chat mentions that that was in reference to her in quote insanity episodes, which we know very oh. little about. Mm-hmm. But it's just one of those things. Like I'm afraid to see it. It's going to be rough. I have a feeling it's going to be gonna a have... rough scene. Luckily, it looks yeah. like we're going to get to wait quite a while before we see those scenes. Well, that's book ten, isn't isn't that's Destiny's that's the plan right now. Oh yeah. goodness, that's gonna be forever. Um, so, it's it. but yeah, we can't find the the quote with Amram. Anyway, but yeah, that was he was just ready to shoehorn into the relationship. Yeah, she wasn't gonna go for it. It's I did odd. like the the last few lines in the scene though. Which ones? The were. Um, the king was gone, but the kingdom lived on. Gavilar had left this life as he lived it with grand drama that afterward required Navani to pick up the pieces. Mm. 
But I'm like, yep, that's what she does. That's, and that's exactly <laughs> how it went. Yeah. Mm hmm. All right. Well, we love hearing from our listeners. So please keep sending in your questions and comments and basically ask. You can ask us about the Cosmere. You can drop us your idea for topics that you'd like us to discuss during the show. While you're at it, we do want to hear your feedback about how you think we're doing, as well as any interesting theories you might have about what's going on in the Cosmere. You can send all your questions and suggestions in a brief, concise email to Cosmere Studies at gmail.com. And hopefully we could read that as part of the show. If you prefer to send us a physical letter, we do have a P.O. Box at the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies, P.O. Box 970063, Orem, Utah 84097. Now, outside of the show, we do have our own personal projects. So, Amy, why don't you tell us what you've been up to? So, I've been attacking my yard, but that's not as exciting to look at. But, um, What did your yard I... do to deserve this? <laughs> It, it let the bark get off of it, and it had needed an arbor. So, oh, Amy, its bark yes. is worse than its bite. Come on. Oh, I know. It's terrible. Um, but I have started sewing again. I'm making some masks for a friend, which I'm probably not going to photograph because they're for a friend. They're not that exciting. Um, and they're masks. But otherwise, I am. I made a project that our patrons will see in a video soon, which involves soft, squishy things. And... Um, I'm going to probably keep. Oh yeah, it's not as bad as it sounds. And I'm going to try and work on my. That's Vin good because answer. it sounds pretty bad. <laughs> no, it's not. I promise. Um, and for those audio-only people, I'm holding up er, an undersized um, mist blade or mistborn glass dagger. Dagger. And I'm going to get the right size done. And so I'm going to try and finish Vin up. So, so that's you said? Kind of my did you goal. say that you got the design for that from the the mistborn from the house card? War? Yeah. So that's the awesome. image where it's the house house Alarial and it has, uh -huh, and it has Sean. Sean and she has one on her, her hip Sam. and I'm like oh, I will sketch that out and so I did it in my 3D print program which is a, a CAD program and then I took I sent the file to a, a local st shop that cuts them and so and I, I did not scale it right like my hand barely fits on the handle part so I need to figure mm -hmm. out the scale for that so that's, that's a pretty that's a pretty good way of doing it though that was a mm -hmm. nice grab yeah. yeah, so anyway, my, my Facebook is Coincidence Cosplay and Props. My Twitter is at Coincidence Cos. My, because my name is too long, I can't forget that. My Instagram is <laughs> at I was, Coincidence I was worried there was a cosplay. delay, and I'm like, no, my world is <laughs> I'm shaking. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm doing it out of order. And my website wrong. is, uh, <laughs> is www.coincidencecosplay.com. So, All right, and, and I also, Jordan? yeah, oh. I also, uh, on my trip a while ago, I uh, talked my niece into looking up a bunch of Sanderson's books, so that's going to be fun, too, seeing her reactions. Nice. Yep. Very nice. And Jordan, how about you? What do you got going on? Uh, Well, hopefully by this time next podcast, I'll, I'll have a podcast of my own up. Um, I'm not, like, it's not quite ready yet. I'm recording it, but uh, everyone should start being on the lookout for microwave-ready motivation. It's going to be a podcast of just quick five six seven minute podcast just about uh, self-improvement uh because i've had a lot of people ask me questions like that on my stream and then i realized oh no uh i'm actually for some of these people the most active adult in their life and so oh. jordan <laughs> you're a role model i know it's <laughs> you horrifying <laughs> it's it's a it's a horrifying realization but uh, so i'm trying to trying to create something i'm hoping to put some of my humor into it and the whole idea is i want it to be something short so that people can go on a break at work listen to it write an idea or two down and move on so i'm hoping that that's going to be up by next podcast that we do here but there's nice. an approval process and recording and all that other stuff wait so so you're saying that you're not part of only one podcast you're part of two that's ridiculous and selfish, and you should be ashamed of yourself. Yes, I should. Now, when I'm not here, trend, guys. I now, when I'm not here, I've got another oh. podcast with my friend Dylan about board games. <laughs> it's called The Innkeeper's Table, and new episodes come out on Friday mornings. It's available on all the major podcast sites, so go ahead and listen to us there. You can also check out our Instagram page, at Innkeeper's Table Podcast. There's a direct link to the audio there, and our most recent episode was about asymmetry in board games. And then, of course, this next week, the episode will be about preparing yourself to teach other people how to play a new board game. 
I've also got a bunch of board game reviews over at www.innkeeperstable.com. And I post about games on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram under the handle Innkeeper's Table. For those of you who want to support the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies podcast, but you can't become patrons just yet for whatever reason, we would love it if you just let your friends know about the show. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast and like and subscribe over on youtube.com slash Cosmere Studies. Bill. All right. Final thoughts on this. Before final thoughts, you forgot to tell people about something that you're doing. What did I forget? To, what? You have a new toy. Your on my new computer? Yes. You got to tell people about this thing. <laughs> okay, fine. I bought a brand new uh, super deluxe, awesome, fancy, schmancy pants computer that is going to help me with my editing quite a bit. Yay. And not going to take, you know, two hours to to spit out a, a video. <laughs> No. And yeah, I am really, really excited about what, that. What did you name it? I named... Okay, so all of my previous computers have had a sort of Lord of the Rings theme because Baggins is a nickname that I've had among friends and got close ties to The Hobbit, love Tolkien, all that stuff. And this one was supposed to have a purplish um, glow to it, and so I named it Mirkwood. Mm. And what was, the, the, what was the first thing you did with the, with the game? That was horrible and wrong. What was it? I forget. Were you, with PC Simulator. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I uh, in, in PC in PC Building Simulator is a game where you work as a uh, as a guy in a computer shop and you're building and repairing <laughs> PCs. So I built this PC in PC Building Simulator. <laughs> Doesn't that just sound wrong on some level, people? It's a little. It's just, it's anyway, just practice. Practice. So enough about my computer. Do y'all have any final thoughts on this prologue? I have a boom arm for my thingy, for my mic, so it's not sitting on my desk over here. But that's not nice. very exciting. So that, but <laughs> Gavilar needs to be shanked. Oh wait, it already happened. Indeed, I, I found this. Suddenly, <laughs> Zeth, I think Zeth, people like Zeth suddenly a lot more mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. This this whole thing, I love it because. More so than I think the other prologues, because we now finally have enough points of view that we started to feel like we had a feeling of what was going on that night. Mm -hmm. But Navani's has thrown everything up in the air where you're just like, okay, wait a minute. Heralds are working with them, but they know. But wait, what? So, but wait, Mm -hmm. then what? what Who's telling who what? Who knows what? And what's their goal? Suddenly, a lot of it's up in the air. And mm-hmm. you have to try and figure out what was Gavilar up to? Why did he tell Dalinar to live by the codes? There's so and, many questions. And Brandon has said the fifth prologue will be from Gavilar's point of view. Oh, it's going to be hard. So that is oh. in, in three years, we're going to get some, some juicy tidbits of what's going on. I can't now in a di- it's gonna be delicious yeah. I'm, I'm excited I'm looking forward to I'm just so excited for this n- next book like I am hungry for more and normally like I said I'm one of those who doesn't read the early chapters because I just want to sit down and read it in a, in a chunk but now that I've started I'm just like okay you know next up ne- next one comes out immediately just devour it and I just want more yeah yeah exactly Shai and Sedai in chat there's always another secret <laughs> Now, in addition to the live episodes of the show that stream on twitch.tv slash innkeepers table every two weeks on Monday nights at 7.30 p.m. Pacific time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern, listeners can find our videos on YouTube or audio versions of the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, and pretty much any other service that carries podcasts by searching for Cosmere Studies. You can also follow us and contact us through Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook under the profile at Cosmere Studies. For the next episode, we're going to keep diving into the Rhythm of War preview chapters. That's what we're going to be doing for the next little while because we are all hungry for that book. So join us for the discussion in two weeks on August 24th at 7.30 p.m. Pacific Time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern at www.twitch.tv slash innkeepers table. Until then, on behalf of Amy, Jordan, and myself, thanks for listening. And remember, there's there's always always another another secret. secret.